from now on I will switch to English. Uh, I hope that everyone understands the language. If not, the question and answer session at the end of my talk can be held in both Russian and English languages. And today I will uh, speak about business intelligence and uh, microservice architecture and how do these two things fit together. Uh, most of my talk uh, will be composed of an experience that we get at Yandex Money when we switch our internal architecture from satellite projects to uh, microservice. microservice. And uh, probably I will give you a few insights what uh, uh, have we found useful and uh, what we have uh, found not useful during the process of switching and uh, the uh, usage of uh, business intelligence in microservices. But this is the end of the day and uh, I don't want to start with a, a very strange picture. I don't want to start with a, uh, just the text on the graphs and I might tell you that I am being a little bit late today because uh, yesterday I finished my sailing trip in Greece and I spent spend the week in Greece Islands and uh, last evening I just returned the board back to its owners. Uh, and it is a pretty good sailing week actually. If you know, a week before there was a huge hurricane in Greece with very strong winds and a lot of boats sunk. But uh, this week was pretty good and uh, we spend all it in the sea. But after this, I have to return somehow from Greece to Moscow and uh, visit this place in order to give a talk. And uh, there should be a few means of transport. Uh, all of these means are generally independent of each other, so I have to use my boat to go to Athens because it's the nearest transport hub. Uh, then I have to go by feet to a taxi. Then I have to use a taxi to get to the airport. Uh, then I have to use bulk transport, I mean aircraft, which take a lot of passengers, carry them to the place I need, in this case Moscow, then I have to take another taxi, and uh, then I get some profits of being here. And uh, to be honest, all of those guys uh, who participate in my, my uh, coming here are uh, not know the result of uh, their uh, thing they do. Uh, they don't know uh, where I am actually get to the conference and give a talk or not. But they perfectly make this their function. So taxis are carrying me, aircraft also transferring me here, and my feet, which is also known as Road 11, also uh, do the job very well. And uh, generally, uh, mostly the same works, uh, the business intelligence uh, with the microservices. So it's a lot of different stuff, different services, and uh, there is no service which knows the result of all the procedures, except uh, in case of the transfer, except me, and in case of business intelligence, business intelligence itself. Uh, what does it really mean, and uh, how we build a such system, and how we benefit from it? Uh, we have a few uh, requirements. Uh, that business intelligence and uh, the data that we guard and uh, the type of access to the data can give the company at Yandex Money. We do payments. Uh, are you familiar with what Yandex Money do? Do anyone use it? Okay, there is at least half of the people, and uh, the rest probably just here that it, it exists. So we do a payments, but the payment is an uh, extremely long process, which involves a lot of different uh, steps from beginning, from filling the shop's form, uh, and uh, till the end of the payment when the user receives the good that he paid for. And in our uh, system, uh, as we are transferring to microservices, uh, there is no other components to know all the stuff throughout the payment entirely, only the pieces of it. And when we uh, come to BI building, business intelligence building, uh, we get a few requirements uh, which are uh, stated here on the slide, which we have to meet. First of all, uh, we have to uh, work with the hello odds, so all of the payments that coming through Yandex money should go into BI system and be presented to its users. Uh, secondly, uh, we have to uh, keep short time to show. So it means uh, time from transaction happening to the time it really show in business intelligence instruments. Uh, next important uh, metric, which are actually part of the time to show, is the request time. So when we store the information about payments in business intelligence database, and we need to uh, do some query, and uh, in sometimes it's ad hoc query, so we have to keep the response time for this ad hoc query and it's processing very short. And uh, we have to support payment system architecture and uh, the changes in this architecture, which is maybe even more important because we have uh, around 20, more than 20 teams who change the Yandex money and have one business intelligence team who have to deal with all of the changes of other teams. And uh, if we go a little bit to the history, it all starts with just the ETL. We have a few silent applications. Uh, it was really few, maybe less, even less than 10. We have ETL, Instruct Transform Load, who puts the data into data warehouse. Uh, it was a uh, very pr pretty straightforward process with not so much steps, not, not so much changes, uh, and not so much transform, actually. 
And then uh, there was uh, analytic cubes and some reports who take data from these cubes. Uh, data in, data in uh, these data sources what was highly aggregated, as uh, there was not so much sources, and the data will be divided into very big chunks. For example, if there are three components who are responsible for payment processing, there will be only three parts of uh, information about every particular transaction. So uh, it's high, uh, 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 it's already some, somehow aggregated. And uh, another important thing, if uh, some of the data sources fails and uh, stops uh, producing the information, stop uh, giving us a, a data about what happened in it, it's uh, pretty straightforward to understand that uh, such thing happens. So finding the gaps in the data, they are rare and they are very noticeable and finding such gaps is really easy. And uh, this was actually uh, our plane. So we took a huge part of information, transferred it somehow, then process and get the profit. And plane is uh, very good mean of transport uh, with only one notice if the schedule fits uh, units. And if the plane don't fly in the time when you need it, so it's completely useless. And uh, the same is with ETL. So ETL do schedule it, uh, data request and data processing, and uh, if the schedule is okay for you, so it's a pretty good solution. If the schedule is not okay for you, so you have to look for something other. And a little bit later I'll describe what for. Uh, but after we do some business intelligence just with cubes, uh, we add back-office interface, which uh, use not only cubes data, but transactional data itself. What I mean by, uh, by transactional data? I mean, for example, interfaces for security department or customer service department, which needs uh, to know not only the aggregation of entire operations happen on payment system, but what happened, for example, with uh, any particular payment, when it stops, when it starts, and so on. Uh, and it was a bit of a challenge, because uh, support, customer support cannot wait for another day to come in order to answer someone's questions, because uh, the person who have troubles, he calling, he uh, on the phone, and he wait for a solution. And customer support cannot tell him, okay, now this day I don't know the answer for a question, but call me tomorrow and I will answer you. Uh, therefore, we have to run our ETL more, much more frequently uh, than we have to run it when we just fill the cubes. And uh, the first problem we, have, uh, we face is uh, that the data sources might not be ready for such uh, change of the schedule. So if you request the data from, for example, card processing once per day, it's uh, one load for car card processing system. If you do it once per 10 seconds, it's uh, another type of load which uh, the card processing system have to support. Maybe remember that was a funny Futurama movie when uh, it was uh, a penguins challenge or something like this, when the Lila decides to save the penguins and they do some activity in this, uh, in, 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 in this area. And the result was described as previously penguins prepared one X per year, and now pen penguins give three X per 50 minutes. And it uh, comes to the planet was overcrowded with the penguins. So the data sources have to be prepared for uh, that request loss. And uh, as there are usually many data sources, all of them uh, in the perfect case should be prepared. Uh, another important thing which appears when we uh, switch back office to our business intelligence system as a data source, we have to introduce an SLA. And in case of customer support uh, tasks, the SLA should be very strict because if someone uh, tries to make a payment and he can't make a payment, uh, this problem should be solved as fast as possible. In order to uh, have an SLA, we have to introduce metrics, uh, which can uh, be used during the SLA, in SLA description. In our case, uh, those metrics are as follows. is the data update time, so it's uh, really the time from operation happens at the backend to the time that uh, it's shown to, uh, it, it loads to uh, business intelligence system. And second, very important metric is interface update time. Uh, at the time uh, from user press request button in user interface and uh, till he receives the actual data set he need. Uh, and the second thing that have to be introduced with uh, SLA is the monitoring because all of these metrics are useless if you don't count them regularly and uh, make some changes in the system according to uh, these metrics. Uh, when we introduce metrics and uh, we start counting them. The next question was how to uh, test in advance how many uh, time, uh, how many um, load can we bear with a such system, and therefore we go to uh, testing. Uh, actually, uh, load testing is a, a, 
separate topic, which I cannot cover in uh, this short presentation. But what we have done, we have uh, a huge load testing on data sources. So we uh, try to estimate how many data data sources can give to our business intelligence system if it comes to uh, loading. Uh, another thing is to uh, test our own ETL, so site, uh, business intelligence site, how many time we spend to uh, uh, request and to save to our, our data tables all the data that we need. And uh, third point, which actually comes uh, the, uh, became the most important, is to test it together. So how fast can you request new data and save it to your tables if you do it simultaneously in, uh, at the same time? Uh, there is a few tricks. For example, uh, it's very easy to test an ETL. Uh, if you run it frequently, you just pause it. For example, if you run it every 10 seconds or every 30 seconds, you can pause it for a few hours and then see how much time it takes to load all the data that was uh, produced during the pause. And uh, we use it um, maybe once per month or once per two months in order to uh, get known how much load can we bear. Uh, for the rest of the testing, for example, for sources testing or for uh, together testing, uh, it's very easy to write your own tools because it's just the request uh, which are made uh, recursively. Then uh, all of OpenOffice and business intelligence perfectly works together, but the payment system architecture starts to switching to microservices. What does it really mean? It means that instead of three sources, we, give, uh, we get uh, tens or even hundreds of sources. Uh, on the other hand, it means that we need much more ETLs in order to work with all of the sources. Uh, and uh, after we get the separate pieces of information for each, uh, each of the components, we have to aggregate it together, the step that previously was made by uh, data sources itself. And it was uh, really a challenge to build uh, such stuff uh, because every source now actually only a small piece of information and you have to uh, connect the piece of this information to information that have other sources. Uh, it means that you probably have to introduce one or more aggregation layers which produce uh, some usable data. And uh, data update time uh, becomes much bigger because uh, if you have, for example, have three data sources and each of them are requested once per 10 seconds, it means that uh, the time to get the all information about one particular operation will take 30 seconds, uh, 10 seconds per three times. Uh, another thing that we uh, face, uh, another issue that we face, was uh, the unique identifier issue. This, uh, because actually, uh, for example, in our system, each service has its own identifiers, and uh, even the uh, types of data that each service uses are different. For example, card processing system use uh, payment, uh, uh, the price of payment as a separate operation, and uh, shop processing system, use entire payment from the beginning of uh, fill the data until the success page at the one operation. And uh, all other services actually have its own granularity. And uh, Unique Identifier needs to solve the problem of this granularity and allow you to uh, uh, clue all the data that you have from different services into one piece of operation. Uh, in our case, it was really an issue and it's not solved to the end at this time. Uh, there is a few tricks that we use, but we don't get the exact result, which allows us to clue the operation parts always. Uh, another thing that uh, when something changed in the services, in the, their business logic, you have to do changes in ETL or in BI or in both of the cases. But the good news is the ETL is still pretty good, so it works with microservices as well as uh, with the siloed applications. Uh, very interesting thing was about uh, update strategies. So we have tens or hundreds of data sources. We have to load data from them, aggregate, and show to user. And we start with a very simple uh, procedure, just load, store, and show. Uh, it was pretty good in loading, but uh, obviously take a lot of time during the show because you have to make aggregation on the fly, and in case of uh, large data sets, it can be time consuming. In, in some, times, uh, some cases, even filtering can be very time consuming in this area. Then we uh, start to make some aggregations before the storing. Uh, definitely it increased our show time, but dramatically decreased storing time because we have to make aggregation before, and uh, often we have to make useless aggregation, the aggregation that the user will never request. And we still spend some machine time and some space for storing this data. Uh, we think, okay, we just to change the order, we load, store the data, and then we'll aggregate uh, before showing. Uh, but it's... Uh, doesn't solve, solve the problem of time to show of any particular operation uh, because aggregation are made on the fly. And uh, 
after storing, we still have some time on the request phase in order to uh, bin the data together. Uh, and in order to solve somehow the problem with update time, we decide to update every particular operation during the uh, user interface request. What does it mean? It means that we load some data with ETL, we aggregate it, store, and when the user requests a filtering, we do another update request to the data source and try to merge the, request, uh, the result of uh, this request to the data that we already have. Uh, it was works pretty good from our side, but it's uh, dramatically decreased the performance of the data sources, and even payments processing uh, may be affected uh, using this uh, uh, strategy. So we stop using it and return out to aggregate store and show. Uh, there is some drawbacks uh, that the source sources still have to uh, keep the uh, cache of data, which they may might not need. Uh, they have to preserve timeline. The huge problem here is how to uh, get the data with EGL uh, ordered by some timeline if updates happen. If any one of you have ever tried to write, for example, a paging or something like this uh, with the updated uh, records, you know that it is some tricks, for example, well, all the times and the updates are the same. And another problem is the request portion uh, during the jail. Uh, request can be very huge. It can be tens or millions of records, and we have to pass it over the net, and it's also decreased the performance. Uh, then we decide to switch to events uh, in order to solve the problem of updates and uh, huge uh, portions. Uh, so some part of the ETL was changed for the events. A little bit later, I will tell you what is architecturally have, what, com, uh, what architecturally have made. Uh, so we uh, put events uh, in, in place, and it means that we have to put additional aggregation because events and uh, uh, continuous processes need to be aggregated to know the uh, exact result of the process. Uh, therefore, we come to another option when we load, construct, then aggregate uh, the thing that we get from uh, events and. Uh, only after that, store it and show. Uh, what do we have now? We still have some ETL for aggregations. We have 10 seconds uh, time to show for uh, uh, any particular source. So we request new data every 10 seconds. And the source counts type that are actually in the production at this time in Yandex Money is around 100, uh, in simultaneously. Uh, what uh, have we used for it? Data Warehouse are made of SQL Server. Uh, for data warehousing, it's a pretty good platform. And that means that for ETL, we obviously use integration services as the most fitable and working out of the box. Evans Q was made with the Kafka. And uh, Evans Reader was made with the C Sharp, but using the original library right on C uh, for Kafka. And uh, this is uh, actually a very tricky part. Uh, does anyone of you ever work with Kafka? OK, there is a few hands. It's pretty good. <laughs> So uh, the Kafka actually is uh, more or less industry standard of event processing, but uh, there is still a few uh, very tricky things. For example, when you read uh, Evans Q from it and try to commit the last offset that you have read, it's not work out of the box, but it appears to work. So you are never sure that you read all of the data and save the last position that you read. And it takes on us some time to understand that it really happens that we commit the last offset and it really doesn't commit it. Uh, we have a lot of different sources. Most of them are APIs uh, written on Java or some other languages. Sometimes we uh, use things like uh, views in SQL Server, but rarely. And the, or most of the, our ETL works actually with API or with a Kafka. And uh, there is a lot of other stuff that I am unable to uh, describe uh, because of the time limits. So something about sharding when you divide bases, downtime, processing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Key takeaways: ETL works fine with events, you can use it. Uh, the most uh, tricky issue in uh, data sources is Unicode identifier, and uh, you have to find a good metrics if you try to combine events and uh, ETL. Uh, in our case, time to show what the best one, but maybe in your case, it may be some other. That is all for today. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Очень точно закончили ровно срок. Спасибо большое за доклад. И у нас даже есть время на вопросы. У нас есть вопросы к докладчику? О. Глядите, архитектура, которую вы нарисовали, ну, похожа на классическую архитектуру MapReduce, которая в ходу подобных системах используется. Но вы, я так понял, вот взяли из ходу ПК, ну, а все остальное как планируете брать? Но нельзя сказать, что это прям действительно классический MapReduce, потому что... Не, ну, нарисовано было похоже, вот MapReduce также рисуют. Похоже, да, и Reduce у нас есть, а вот с Мэпом дело обстоит несколько хитрее. Пока, честно говоря, мы не видим, что вложение в то, чтобы все целиком переводить на MapReduce и ходу пуски стек нам принесет какие-то прям реальные профиты. Потому что с точки зрения вот end-user использовать кубы, там те же самые, или опишки, это гораздо проще, чем писать на пиге, например. 
Вот. А на наших объемах SQL показывает, в общем, очень хорошие результаты. Поэтому не упираемся пока в это дело. Еще вопросы? Спасибо большое за доклад. Спасибо. Спасибо за внимание. Спасибо.